Yo, yo, yo, what it is, what it do, what is good. Hello, number two, and once again, we back, y'all. We back, like I said, we would be. <laughs> y'all, hope y'all been staying safe, staying blessed, having a wonderful day. We are back with a different type of reaction this time. Now, this one was asked for on multiple occasions, for months, by my boy and long-time subscriber, Big Hass. Now, he wanted us to watch a cop of 90 about transfer sport. His football team, like a little documentary. We don't know who cop of 90 are. They do like little documentaries and stuff like that on like away days on football clubs, you know, supporting cities, stuff like that. Really good. If y'all want to go check them out, I will leave the link to their channel in the description below as well. Also, shout out Big Hass, obviously. He put us onto it. He wanted us to check this out. It's 40 minutes long. This is going to be a long one, so I do apologize. But do stick with me because I've got a feeling this is going to be a banger. It's going to be a banger. But as always, fam, if you are new round here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, leave a like. Leave me a comment as to what you want to see me react to next. I love you guys. Without further ado, enjoy the video. All righty then, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to forget. Two months ago, İki ay önce Türkçe anlatayım. Burada virüsü işleri kötü gittiği için çatıya çıktı, intihar edecek. Ve aşağıdan şöyle bağırdılar ona. Gel iki ay sonra şampiyon olacağız. Şimdi intihar etme. İki ay sonra edersin. Şampiyonluğu gör ondan sonra. Adam intihar etmedi. That's true story. That's it's really yeah. true story. Exactly. Crazy what football can do to people, right? Football is broken with the same teams, winning the same trophy against the same opponents in almost every season in almost every country and it's only getting yeah Bayern Munich win their 10th consecutive uh Bundesliga title that's the thing about football these days right it's it's, it's the big couple teams that always win. Germany is it's just Bayern Munich recently you're seeing Dortmund did not come through um who else is coming through out there uh Bayern Leverkusen I think are playing pretty well but England's the same story. Man City, Liverpool. For the past couple of years, that's always been. Right now, it's Arsenal. It's looking like Arsenal right now. So, Arsenal are playing some mad good football. And I don't like it because I'm a United fan. But it's the same in Scotland. Rangers, Celtic. The same in Spain. you got your three teams. Barcelona, Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid. Though none of them are looking good right now either. But yeah, big teams. It's too much money. These teams have got too much money, bro. I ain't gonna lie. It'll simply be sensational stuff. Resulting in a toxic cycle where a select few teams now hold France and yeah, France, and PSG, in it. All of which is depriving us of new football. Except from that Leicester. Which to me has always been what football's truly about. Luckily, last season saw a few underdogs with a chance of glory. So I went on a journey to document their story, their people, and their culture, and show whilst winning isn't everything, we need different winners in football to remind us of why we love this game. This is once in a lifetime. There are seven cities in Turkey with populations exceeding a million people. Yet the country is dominated by one city in particular. Whether economical, cultural or political, if it happens in Turkey, the city of Istanbul, despite not even being the capital, plays a significant part. So much so that in the build up to a recent election, the country's longtime president Recep Erdogan admitted and so when Erdogan's political party lost the Istanbul mayoral elections for the first time in 15 years to a newcomer called Ekrem Imomlu, Erdogan demanded a re-election. Imomlu won the re-election as well. Boy, you'd be pissed, in it? To the country's favorite sport. Since the beginning of football, Istanbul has always been the obviously dominant city. Such as their dominance of the 61 titles won before the start of last season, only seven have left Istanbul. The, the Galatasaray, Beşiktaş and Fenerbahçe teams were so big that nobody could battle with them. The championship was always decided between them three. In fact, for the first decade and a half of the Turkish league, no non-Istanbul team even got close. Oh, the wow. Club, they had this hegemony, this kind of dominance over the Turkish league, and they presented it as if it was common sense, as if it was natural course of life. They could buy anyone's players, they could match fix, they could, like, the refs would defend them, like, they could do anything until the 70s. Well, they were match fixing. That's how they were winning their titles, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. When a club from Trabzon 
A small working class city from the Black Sea region. I want to go to Trabs on. I want to go watch a football game as well, man. Dead Hagamini. The mail went crazy. It went crazy. In 75 76, they nearly won their first championship. But it wasn't just once, it was like 76 77. Six titles in oh, yeah. a decade. That's why they cannot, like, the audacity. 78 79, audacity. That's not a character. 79 80, it was like a David Goliath thing. When in 80, when in like 80. an 81. You ask this Istanbul club supporters and whatnot. And then in so, 84, you won it. In 84, oh. once again, yeah. They do not like us because. We had the audacity to not only question, but destroy their dominance over the Turkish league and the Turkish football. Because we just kept going and we won six trophies in a short span. And did it with local kids from this town. And I read that like, the, was it the entire squad was from the city? Yeah. Despite he's in a short span. And did it with I apologize, my mind that crashed. And I read that like, the, was it the entire squad was from the city? Yeah. Despite being not, not the second, not the third, but the 30th biggest city in the country, it was Trabzon's football club who became the only side capable of taking on the Istanbul footballing giants, earning them the nickname Black Sea Storm. And it was like invincible Arsenal team. In the first 30 minutes, we were sure we were going to score and then dominate. O 70'den diyeyim sana 84'e kadar yani. Hep İstanbul kulüpleri, İstanbul kulüpleri buraya gelip de beraber kalırsalar çok büyük iş. Ah, hang on. Did he say that the team from Istanbul, they come here and win, they celebrate it like it's a big success, right? Oh, just a draw. Oh, shit. With the exception of Bursaspor in 2010, Trabzonspor has been the only non-Istanbul team to have won the Turkish Super League. Actually, there's this great chant Trabzonspor fans sing that says, attack, so they will understand you. And I think that pretty much sums up what people what these people have to go through to be recognized and it's that mentality that inspired a fan base way beyond the city i was born and raised in ankara it latched on to to to people from across turkey i've been always supporting trabzon sport not only people from trabzon no i have no connection to the black sea being a football fan you identify yourself with a club you see your values and your character in it so it's my I guess my protest vote against the status quo, you know, standing against the tide. Everybody around me were supporting the biggest Istanbul teams, and I felt like, you know, I, I have to stand up. And People from here, go on then, big man. Try the, the audacity again. They don't, they don't think like they don't ask themselves if they could do do something. They just go for it. Remember Imamlu, the first man to beat Erdogan's party in more than a decade and a half. Well, he was born and raised in Trabzon. Hey. Adores his local team. We, as Trabzon Sport and people from Trabzon, we refuse to know our place. And perhaps that's how Trabzon got its nickname. We are the stubborn city. We're known for be, for having a short fuse. This is our famous man, Baba. Çok değişik bir insan. İnsan topluluğuyuz yani. Öyle söyleyebilirim. Trabzon character. I'm not talking about the club. I'm talking about the. The, the people, yeah. Character is quite a strong thing. There is this culture of what they call delikanlı. It would literally translate as uh, crazy blood. So you might have realized we are very strong-willed and short-tempered. Yeah. Where's that come from? I'm not. It, it might be the weather. <laughs> also, look like working-class people, man. Dockyards and all that, bro. Come on, come on now. The inertia. So it is a lot of mountains. Some strong people, bro. Is infamous. Rains all year. If it's not raining, it's foggy. It does affect how people are or their character, doesn't it? And whilst this stubbornness could be interpreted as hostile, locals insist it's more to do with their passionate way of being. We get really angry really quickly, but that's because we are so passionate about it. We use it in extreme extreme ways and those extreme ways can be seen in every local passion from their seafood to their hazelnuts we are really proud of our own produce so we are the place for hazelnuts we put hazelnuts in our coca-cola to a more concerning passion in yo pause what you put hazelnuts in your coca-cola hazelnuts in coke i might have to try that still <laughs> Personally, I'm not a big gun fan, but there is a big gun culture in this city for some reason, yeah. You're allowed guns into... I'm oh, sorry for the pauses, fam. I know we're only six minutes in, but um, we've got a 40-minute video.
You allow guns in Turkey, yeah. Is it only the UK you're not allowed guns in? For example, my grandfather used to sleep with both his guns under his pillow. I mean, is that a really good mix with the city that has the shortest temper in the country as well? It, it, it might not be, but it's very different to the, like, southern uh, US gun culture. It's very different. But whilst their passion for weaponry may reflect their aggressive side, there's an equally warm side reflected in another passion. Trabzon'da balı severler. Evet, bir tutkudur. Aynen. Yani çünkü e, çok güzel çiçekler oluyor yaylalarımızda. Onun için kaliteli ballarımız e, oluyor yani. But even in this passion, there's an intense side. Thanks to the region's famous or infamous variant of honey known as Delhi Bal. The crazy honey can put you in a coma. Evet. What? Kesinlikle. Yani onun fazlası zararlıdır. Onun için adı üstünde Delhi Bal. Yani e, vücut düzenini ister istemez e, tansiyonunu mesela baş dönmesi ama yani e, genelde Trabzon'un kökeninde bir delilik vardır yani kesinlikle. And it's that mix of sweet and crazy that is creating an extremely hospitable people. We love people. We love to show off what we can do. Everybody that wants to like the city gets embraced. But it's the extreme and unique ways that people express their two biggest loves. Yeah, Yo, do you know what? I love the way football can bring people together, man. You know, like, just... If somebody goes to, like... like take, for instance, if I was to go somewhere and record uh, a, a match day experience or something like that, the way that football fans take to you for going to their, to their club and, you know, trying to find out more about their history and stuff like that, the way that fans take to you and treat you as one of their own, that's what I love about football. Not so much a divide in football. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's good to have a bit of banter with people. But sometimes I think in football, shit can get a little bit too intense. And especially when it comes to tragedies and people talk madness about it, I think that's where you should be drawing lines. But yeah, I mean, it's all good having banter. But I love the fact that clubs, it's like Trav's on. You know, you've seen that guy, that boy there giving him his hat and then what I said I repeat after me, champions, Trasbon. And then yeah, that's that's what I love about football, man. It's the togetherness of football, man. Especially when like it's like internationals and and like a the, the country's playing. Everyone is just supports just one team and that's it. You know what I'm saying? Ah, uh, that's what I love. that's one thing I love about football, man. And the club that is most fascinating. I think that's one thing people don't see about football as well. Is the license plate code, the postal code of the city and somehow it became a symbol. The number of the shield, the solar is a little bit too big. I need to get one of these tops though. When we had six zero, I got an Aston Villa top on top of his transport top. I thought that the match was finished six one. Is that real? Yeah, that's real. I have to ask for it. I don't know. People pay extra to get a phone number that starts or ends with 61. So this is your restaurant? That is, that is her. And did you open it in 1961 on purpose or is it coincidence? 1954 is Trabzon They took a picture of, of an ATM machine that the numbers were all there, but the number one and number six were all faded. Because everyone's pin number is something with 61. 6161. <laughs> that was saying like. It's different numbers. Shit. Through the colors of claret and blue or bordo mavi in Turkish. Bordo mavi. Did I say that right, big ass? So decked out with the colors of the local club. Is that particularly strong because it's in Cameroon or is this normal? Oh, no, it's normal. It's normal. Bordeaux Mavi is the essence of the club. Bordeaux Mavi. So you will see the, the colours everywhere. Claret and blue, man. I really want to go here. They're beautiful colours. 
And just like 61, the locals embraced it in extreme ways. So there was this jean brand called Mavi, and right next to their shop, someone opened the shop and named it Bordo. So it would be <laughs> Mavi together. But even with their audacious ways, stubborn spirit and unrivaled passion, in a changing world, even Traps and Sport couldn't keep up with the Istanbul clubs forever. I mean, football changed, hasn't it? And Money, yeah. globalization. Yes. And we had to adapt to... A, a lot team. less passion. Not by fans. Not that to me a lot is like a they've lost the players have lost a lot of passion nowadays. I feel like everything's monetization, you know, like they get money. It's all about having fancy cars and you know, women on your arms and you know, going to big fancy events. I don't think these days a lot of players play for the badge. Which they should do and I think that's do you know what that's the one thing being a Man United fan that drives me fucking mental is that bringing all these players in, none of them really want to play for the badge, they're here for the money. Let's be real. It's got it's like any big team, you know? Any any massive team is able to spell like, look at killing Mbappe for fuck's sake. Look what's happening at PSG. What the fuck? That just literally embodies what football is these days these days, sorry. Mental, right? New world, a lot of money according to football. We could not compete economically with Istanbul Club. When you look at the economy, when you look at the scale, economically, we cannot. This city, this is a small city. It, it's a miracle that Trabzonspor is in the almost in the same league with the other uh, Istanbul players. But just as the 80s saw Trabzonspor lose its best players to clubs who could offer more, that same decade saw the city lose much of its population for the exact same reason. There wasn't any possibility back in the 80s to, to earn a living wage. It was a really hard work. So a lot of people tried their luck outside of Trabzon. Trabzon has a huge diaspora. So like uh, probably only in Istanbul, you might have more than a million people from Trabzon. Not only Istanbul, but also my parents left in the 80s you're from the netherlands i'm from the netherlands i was born and raised in rotterdam my father's from trabzon i was actually born in germany so you've come all the way from dusseldorf yeah. how far have you come for this match 3700 kilometers from belgium the people who are educated who have, who have good jobs from big cities of turkey they didn't move to europe basically the people who left they left from regions like the black sea this region and so now wherever you are in the world you're never far from a traps and sport fan because among the turks in europe traps and sport may be you know the number one team all of which has led to their club slogan Bize her yer Trabzon. it means everywhere is Trabzon for us Trabzon is everywhere and everywhere is Trabzon, right we travel anywhere we go to Matches away. We play as if we are the home team. And this truly is the case when, on occasion, they've played home wow. games in Istanbul that saw crowds of more than 60,000 in claret and blue. If you're in Belgium, it's like Trabzon for us. Why? You, in Belgium, you have the amazing teams, Anderlecht, Pop. This is different. It's a lifestyle. Dolayısıyla Trabzonspor onlar için dışarıdakiler için bilhassa it's the love and the passion that our uh, our fathers that gave us. Memleketle kurulan bağ. Yani uh, ana vatanla uh, baba eviyle baba ocağıyla kurulan bağ. Some people um, pray and they feel themselves close to their lost ones. I don't believe in all that. So I think the connection that I have with my father with my late father is through Trabzonspor. Oh man. That's a beautiful way to put it though. In the mid 80s. By the mid 90s, Trabzonspor had somehow scraped back to fighting for top spot. I mean, in 95, 96, we fought back. And what happened in 95, 96? I remember 96. That was a traumatic experience. 95, 96, again, leading this league, we were just dominating the league. Then, uh, like four weeks before the season ended. Yeah, we were five points ahead. We lost against Vanspor. Man, it was Vanspor. I've never even heard of that. <sighs> Vanspor was a relegation team. They were just battling relegation. I wow. The name of that goalkeeper, Singachu. It was just, we, we couldn't beat him. We, we couldn't beat him. We lost, we won the next game. And the penultimate game was at home against Fenerbahce. I don't want to talk about this. With two games left. I don't want to remember that play. Don't <laughs> ask me about that game. <laughs> but let me just. I'm sorry, that was the... That was 5th of May. Remember the day. Yeah. 
If you win, if we win, it's pretty much guaranteed. You're gonna be champion. Yeah. But even if we tied, we were almost assured to win the league. So we went up one nil. They drew it one one, and they scored in the 80th minute. And it was the top of my head two one, and we just lost the league. In Trabzon, after being ahead and. People, people killed themselves in the city. It was, Whoa. It was grim, man. It was, it was, it was dark. You see my life. Yeah. This is giving them the title. Yeah, I think there's three or four fans committed suicide. Şampiyonluk yarışıp da e, kaybettiği yıllarda intihar eden e, ve hayatını kaybeden çok taraftarı var Trabzonspor. Orada ben sahadaydım, uçutmam. E, o sis şu anda olduğu gibi sis bir anda Trabzon şehir birlerine çöktü. Oh man. And whilst the ability for a set of football results to cause such tragedy may seem almost unfathomable, when you speak to fans you realize there's a set of unique reasons the club has such an effect. Firstly, there's locals almost existential connection to the club that goes beyond the cliches of regular fandom. Burada insanların başka hiçbir tutuşu yok. Hiçbir şey yok. Sadece Trabzon. Ya futbol dünyanın her yerinde büyük sloganlarla anlatılır. Futbol biraz abartmak demektir. O yüzden Trabzon özelliği başkadır. Ama burada abartılı cümlelerin altının dolu olduğuna emin olabilirsiniz. You know, I always wonder, right? <laughs> if he sat there just going, yeah, yeah. Or like, understanding what's going on or whether someone's telling them what everyone else is saying. Because, bro, I'd be like, what did he say, bro? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wonder if he can speak or, or understand different languages. Fans have sued the club for, for emotionally affecting them this much. They wrote letters to what? government officials. <laughs> you guys are crazy, man. Close, close, close because Down it makes front. me illness. <laughs> no, no problem about cancer. A problem Trabzonspor. Secondly, there's the region's unique relationship with the darker themes in life. Here, sadness and happiness is together. Thirdly, there's the burden of their once great past. Trabzon, bundan 150 sene önce imparatorluğun önemli şehirlerinden biriydi. Trabzon used to be the capital of an empire called the Pontian Empire. They spoke Pontian Greek. Yeah, actually, the patriarch of the Orthodox Greek Church is at Trabzon's for time. O kaybettiği güçten gücü arıyor aslında bir bir bakıma futbolla arıyor. Add to this the yearning for friends and family lost to migration. People, especially the diaspora, misses the city a lot, and the people miss them. And the scandal of heartbreaking proportions still fresh in people's minds. Ukraine is not that far away; it's right above us. So when Chernobyl happened, that radioactive strike came here as well. Most oh. of in Turkey is from the fields of Trabzon and Rizem, and the Turkish government didn't actually warn the population, and we drank that too. What? And all of that led to a cancer in every heart in the Black Sea region. And all of this considered perhaps explains how football grew to mean so much. There's a melancholy to Trabzon and yeah. Captain Sport. Yeah. There's like, I wouldn't call it sadness, but there's like an understanding that life can be hard yeah. as much as it can be fun. Would yeah. you agree with that? Yeah. With the fog coming off the mountains. Oh, exactly. With the, the, exactly. the suffering you've yeah. had in history. Yeah. And that suffering is reflected in the stands with the fans' embrace of arabesque music in their chants. It's called arabesque because it's got Arabic, Egyptian uh, vibes to it, but the lyrics are very sad, very uh, melancholic. We ran out of days, yeah. we gave our lives for, yeah. for the sake of cloud and blue. And that's, that's in your narrow streets, the song that yes. you guys sing. Yes, about the, death, exactly. about rain. Yes. You're telling me that's happy. Yes. You're yes. telling me that's something yes. to be joyful about. Yes. Neden? Çünkü hava iyi ya şimdi. Üç dakika sonra hava bozuk. Yani hayat ve ölüm iç içe. İyi ve kötü iç içe. Yani böyle bir şehirden bahsediyoruz. Futbolu da tam da böyle. Even if football was a mix of the good and the bad, after 96 it still provided mostly heartbreak to Trabzon sport. With more close but failed title runs in 05 and 09, before the city was introduced to an entirely different level of pain, thanks to the 2010-2011 season, otherwise known as... The stolen season. We were nine points ahead. Uh, at the end of the first half of the season. And you were leading most of that season. Too. Yeah, yeah. Fenerbahce magically won 16 of their 17 games in a row. 
Hmm? Ended, points, uh, and became champions on, on, on goal that smells a bit fishy, that one, bro. One goal difference. One, yeah. And then, like, a month or two later, a big scandal broke out. Oh, yeah, I knew it. Really? Yeah, I knew it. Oh, no way, bro. I've never felt so robbed in my life. I saw how they were playing. Some teams were playing against Manuache. I was like, okay, they're getting paid, man. They're getting paid to play like that. Is it a conspiracy? No, no, no. The big, the big chief, big president, Aziz Yildirim from Fenerbahce went to jail. There were a lot of tapes, a lot of video footage. There's evidence for at least eight games that were fixed. And whilst UEFA banned Fenerbahce from European competition, wow. and the Champions Board of the Champions League instead, the Turkish government said the evidence was obtained illegally. The charges were eventually dropped, and the Turkish FA still declared Fenerbahce champions. We felt not only robbed, but also wow because there was no justice afterwards and so what happens when an already emotional fan base goes through a combination of heartbreaking failures mixed with enraging injustice a decade of chaos in the stubborn city that's a point of time where i think we lost our shit and so whenever wherever injustice was felt the people of Trabzon did what they do best and refused to know their place from the club president locking referees in their dressing room overnight another game the refs were really bad and he decided it was a good idea to lock them in the stadium not let them leave <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Call up and say, hey, let him out. What? Salih Dulce moment, which saw the player, fed up with poor refereeing, take matters into his own hands, literally. He what takes it from his end, he falls on the ground, yeah. takes it from the ground, says, off you fuck, yeah. and then, <laughs> and then he starts, and he sees the red card himself, and starts walking like, yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> what he did, that red card, represented so much, and something so important. <laughs> that when they arrive in the airport the team the fans who are waiting for for them there thousands of them with red cards in their hand this statue dedicated that moment to him <laughs> i haven't seen those statues street but... named after him <laughs> what and then there's the new feelings towards fenerbahce the rivalry we had with fenerbahce bro i just know when fenerbahce and Trav's Bond supporters meet each other, there is a massive clash. I just know it. I know there is. I know there is. There's got to be fireworks when them two see each other, dude. Turned into uh, animosity. Right. I've heard that. It's different now. It's like almost the level of Galafena, would you say? I would say it's worse. Since that stolen season, almost every time the two have met, there's been controversial moments. There was a few games that could not be finished. From violent pitch invasions, to the Fenerbahce team bus being shot on the highway outside of Trabzon. The attack, which happened as they travelled to Trace Bonnet. What? People outside of Trabzon asking like, why you guys aren't this tense with this? Like, uh, Well, you're robbed, didn't it? Saying, Man, what would you do if, if there was a thief in your home? So that was the feeling. It's a mixture of anger rage and very profound sadness bu şehri kaderini oynadılar bu şehri geleceğini oynadılar bunu oynadılar hayallerini oynadı hayallerinden hayallerimiz cazlar you know i told you about the audacity we had in the 70s and the 80s i think we have never been forgiven for that so as much as we say it's been 38 years i feel like it hasn't it hasn't for me okay 2010 2011 we won the title everybody in trabzon thinks we are champions that belongs to us but we don't have the trophy we don't we didn't have the celebration we didn't have that explosion of, of joy but then a decade after the stolen season traps and sport took the 2022 season by storm come on Six now Germanian only needed one point to win their first official title since the let's go yo mid table antalya sport so copper 90 and i hit the road again to see just what goes down when a city so intensely attached to its club finally ah oh, this is gonna be good a league title again all right, well, here we are in Trabzon. My first time, and... Uh, That's Hamzik right there. Now, I've been blown away. I was warned before I got here of the fanaticism the locals have for their local football club, and only their local football club, but I don't think anything could have prepared me for this. There is not a building, not a street I haven't seen covered in claret and blue. The first thing Excuse we me. as we got out of the airport, our taxi was hmm. covered in a giant Trabzon Spore flag. In his article for the Blizzard, Patrick Keddie said that the city's dreams, hopes, and identity is wrapped up in this club. But this is this is something on another level. You've got a Trabzonspor bus stop 
uh, decked out like a dugout. It's almost like a theme park for Charleston sport. It's like the city was almost built just so that, so that they could celebrate a club. But it wasn't only on the surface where Charleston sport was prevalent. It's behind every nook and cranny the club somehow appeared. Whilst walking through the market, we've just been told behind this little store is some kind of Charleston sport uh, museum almost because one of the ex-managers owns this store. What was his name? So this is his time as a player, yeah. this is his time as a director. Yeah. But when he was a director, this is when they won everything. Yeah. From a legend of the dugout, we were next off to meet a legend of the terraces in Ahmet Firurin, a journalist known to all of Trapson since he was a kid. Thanks to his passion display, they headed the last time the club won the title back in 1984. <laughs> What was noticeable about Ahmed's feelings on the almost certain title wasn't the benefit to himself, but to the younger generation, who didn't get to experience what he did in 84. And that same sentiment was one we found in everyone we spoke to. Where it became evident, the title win meant very different things depending on your age. I'm, I'm 32 years old. I've never lived it, so I don't know how am I going to react. It's kind of an age-dependent feeling, I think. A lot of people who are older are going to feel more relieved. People my age don't know this. Like, the older generations, they do. For the younger, younger generations, I think it's really a huge, you know, Explos ecstatic, explosive, you know, feeling that, you know, you're becoming a champion. And but there was some explosions everyone was insisting <laughs> on avoiding. Şimdi bu şu anda Trabzon'da 7'den 70 herkes silahlanmaya hayır. Yani baştan sonra no. The club, Trabzon Sport Football Club actually had to do a campaign. They're asking people not to celebrate with guns. Why? Çok insan öldü. Ha mermi uçtu da bir daha yorgun mermi. They did an amazing video where very famous and very dear people to Trabzon Sport fans that had passed away saying that we cannot go there. To, to see this, but you shouldn't come here neither. Instead, the club was encouraging fans to express their excitement at the squad's final training session on the eve of the match. So, of course, we had to be there. <laughs> what did he say? I say he doesn't understand. And it wasn't just regular fans emotional on the eve of the title, as we found from speaking to one ex-board member, Nevzat Aydin. How big of a deal is this? It's, it's huge. It's huge. I mean, we haven't celebrated the championship for the last 38 years. So it's... I can't even start expressing how huge it is for the, for the family, for the Trabzon. You're, you're emotional, I can tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Aydin, a self-made multi-millionaire, and star of Turkey's Dragon's Den was on the verge of tears while chatting with me and was living proof that no matter what you did or achieved, if you came from Trabzon, the club pulled at your heartstrings. We came so close so many times that I mean, I, I, I, I don't think I will believe, you know, before I get the cup in my hand that, that we have the championship. You, won, but you're only one point away. Yeah, I mean, we have four matches left, one point away. But you don't think... We'll see tomorrow. It's, it's, it's, it's still early to yeah. talk about the, the <laughs> celebrations and everything. Oh, that's sick. That travel out was sick, bro. Yo, this is going to be crazy off the rails, bro. Yes, I was 11 years old. How painful was it? So I was still a child. I was like, okay, our time will come. But uh, we didn't know that it's going to last so long. 38 years. Like in 2019, Pauk won the league in Greece after 34 years. And Atletico Mineiro from Brazil won the league after 50 years. And I was like, 
I said, please God, it's gotta be our turn now. I said, please. And uh, now we're standing here, D-Day. This city has been waiting for that explosion for decades. I'm just done with the Istanbul Championships. Football needs a championship for Trabzonspor. We need to show them that the country is bigger than, than the three Istanbul teams. Because there is a whole region that is just ripe to show you how, how much it means to us. Just got outside the stadium and it's incredible. You've got every bit of Turkey wrapped up into one, dancing around the stadium in this chumps on rain. It's absolutely beautiful, but to top it off, I've been told, there's actually people who have been camping overnight. But why, why not sleep in your house? The Baba, from there we grabbed a quick bite, quick drink and quick dance before surprising our cameraman Amir, a Trabzon sport fan from Istanbul, with his first ever ticket. Joking? No, of course not. And headed inside for historic night. That's awesome, man. The fact they did that for their cameraman, that's crazy, bro. That's awesome. <laughs> I think I saw... A vi I think that dude who's climbing the light, I don't know if it's him, but I'm pretty sure I saw a video or a picture of, like, just a shit ton of people doing it and it was crazy dude this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for a lot of people so we're going to experience it to the fullest. Take the lead. Are you safe? Do you think you have time? Do you think fans will relax? I, I, me personally, I won't. Every time we, we, were, we were close to a championship game, the, it, it, it sometimes became too much for us. You so screwed it up, let's be honest. We screwed it up. Yeah, we screwed it up. Oh, shit. But I don't need a point, right? A draw, you'll be relaxed. A draw is good. We, we just need one point. But will you be relaxed? I won't. I won't. Because this should be the most calm I have been in decades. Because all you need is a draw. Yeah, yeah. But still, but still, everybody's thinking about everything that can go wrong. Because problems for everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Oh no. You can't script it. You can't script it so, so, so bad for Trabzons for sometimes. Because you've dropped quite a few points the last few weeks, right? It's, it's yeah, yeah. The last couple of weeks, draws, draws, draws. We lost the game against Rizal Sport. A perfect storm is just brewing. The unthinkable always happens. The things that if, if they were written in a movie, you would say, no, this is too cliche. It happens. Wow. <laughs> There's no way they scored a sixty first minute. No way. Bro, you cannot write that any better. When we 
take a lead, there's always like a, like a, like on the belly uh, nerve because we have seen it gone wrong so many times. Two two. I mean, everybody in the stands, uh, I can already picture it. Everybody is going to be nervous because it, it has been so long. We wear our heart on our sleeves. So a lot of people are just going to bite, bite their fingers off of the, you know, of the, of, of the stress of the game. No, but this is Antalya sport. What could go wrong? <sighs> Trabzonspor. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong. What's happening? stipulating that pitch invasion during the 90 minutes can lead to an abandoned match and all three points handed to the visiting team all of a sudden Trabzon Sport's inevitable title celebrations didn't look so sure oh no it's good Iraq it's good Iraq we are, we are passionate we always show we have always shown our passion <laughs> There's going to be a little bit of a bad moment in the game. The whole city, the whole stadium will just explode. And the tempers might flare, might flare. Emil, what happened? Couldn't be a better setup for a win. You get to win at home, and all you need is a point. But you've got a history of fucking up constantly. Bit harsh. <laughs> is there a chance you fuck it up this time? No fucking way. Look around you, man. Look around you. Have you ever seen a city so together? Men, women, all the younger, several generations is all together. Have you ever seen a synergy like this? Like, have, we, have you ever seen a city that deserves to win a league title as much as this one? I'm after you, man. I mean, look around you. Look around you, man. With all honesty, I don't think that happened. This is going to happen. Oh, thank God they didn't abandon the match. The fact that, you know, a team that is not part of the establishment that is basically winning it with less resources. That's a more beautiful story in my eyes. Hmm. I think it's vital that people take interest in other teams, not just the big teams, of course. We want diversity, we want new teams, we want new stories, we want new cities. Because otherwise, we're really going down the money rabbit hole. It hurt. It hurt a lot. Football needs 
championship outside of the big teams because there are so many more stories to tell, so many more fan bases to learn about. When a team outside of the established teams wins, the emotions that just explode out is just so different and we see the best of football. And at the score, that's what we want. Man, you're gonna see when we win this thing, people are gonna go to cemeteries. That's, that's what's gonna happen. Because they wanna share this with their loved ones that weren't here to see it. You never got to see a championship with your grandfather. Do you think there's something kind of poetic in the fact that the first season that finished after he passed away, you got to win it with your newborn? They say Trapson is everywhere. Is, is Trapson in, do you think Trapson's in the afterlife as well? You're gonna see the true meaning of the sentence for us everywhere is dropped on. Hey, that's sick. Germany now. Yo, well, okay then. That was a good video, man. I enjoyed that. It's a long video, very long video. Deb, you're still here. I appreciate you. I love you. Thank you so much. Yo, like, like I said, man, football needs this. You know, we need more Trasbons. We need more Leicesters. We need more. You know, when, even when Rangers came back up and beat Celtic to the title, we need more of that. We need more, not smaller clubs, but, you know, a lot less funded clubs winning league titles, you know. But, yeah, that's going to wrap the video up. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like, obviously, obviously. And if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe. Yo, big house. Hope you enjoyed the video, fam. As always, man, stay safe, stay blessed. I will catch you in the next one. I need to go edit this and upload it. So I'll see you then. I suppose. Hello. But yeah, stay safe, stay blessed. I'll catch you next one. I love you guys. Be your host, local. And I'm Matt. Laya. Ciao.